to our course on creating socially and emotionally safe and inclusive environments. So this is our EDU 485 course here at University of Laverne. So welcome everyone. All right, it'll be um, it'll be a fun summer. So I hope you guys can um, gain a lot of knowledge from this class, you know, and build on what you guys already um, are coming in with. So that's the goal. A lot of it we will be learning from each other. So that's also a fun part of the course. So um, I'm going to quickly go over some of the student learning outcomes for this course. So upon successful completion, um, you'll be able to demonstrate knowledge of social emotional development and learning. Um, you will be exploring your own personal beliefs, uh, systems that influence adult child relationships. Um, you will be identifying teachers behaviors that enhance or detract from student success. Um, we will be discussing, uh, the social emotional theories, um, and, in applying it to practice that informs, you know, positive outcomes and a child's ability to self-regulate self and, uh, problem solve. Um, you also will be able to identify the unique behavior guidance, uh, you know, needs of each individual child. Um, you will be able to recognize the effects of ad adverse childhood experiences such as trauma and biological and environmental factors um, that impact children's development, learning, and behaviors. Um, and then you will learn how to create an environment that fosters resilience and offers support for children experiencing these adverse factors. Um, and then lastly, you'll be able to explain how to identify, uh, we will actually be actually looking at um, resources um, to support children, including those who have experienced adverse factors. So part of this course is identifying children who have, um, you know, more needs uh, and having and knowing, you know, where, where, which resources to provide them. So if you guys ever need assistance with that, with, you um, maybe things that have come up this school year with you guys. I know it's going to be summer break, so it won't be like, you know, most likely won't be kids right now you have in class. But if you guys need any resources for things that maybe came up through the year and you felt like it was lacking, let me know. I can help you with that. All right, so we do have one required textbook for this course. It's called Beyond Behavior Management. And why this book is important, it's um, you can find it relatively cheap online. Um, but why, why I find it helpful is that it has so many different activities. So I consider this more of a resource book as well. Um, it does give us a great amount of base knowledge on social and emotional development for children, but it also has so many different activities you can directly apply in the classroom. So if you're feeling stuck one day, um, or, you know, you're wanting to try something new, you can always refer back to this book and get some good skills in there. Our other required re reading for this course is the California Preschool Learning Foundations. Um, you just need to, you can buy it in book form if you wanted to, it's not required. Um, you click this link and it opens directly up on uh, online. So I'm gonna skip the classroom climate and relationships and then the university information resources and services sections for now and you guys can review those um, as you wish later on if you'd like. Um, two important ones, though, to mention is Blackboard. If you're having technical issues, um, you can call them here. There is an email, I believe you can. Um, they have directly told me if you call, they give first priority to the callers over, you know, reaching them out over online. So um, they are closed on the weekends as well. So please call this number um, through the week. If you're having a hard time getting through, let me know. Um, and then our Wilson Library. So if you ever need assistance there as well, there's a lot of great Wilson Library resources directly online too to help support you. So I, I actually will go over that in a different video. So again, I'm going to be skipping the self-care um, resources, the goals of La Fetra College of Education for now. And um, I'm going to go into more of what's applicable specifically to this course. Um, this is the Child Development Program Policy for Late Work. I'm sure you guys have seen it um, already. This is just applies to all child development courses. Um, for our TK folks, we are more lenient um, as you guys are here to be, um, you know, you're not traditional undergrad students. So you're here to um, further, further your growth in your career. So 
Um, so please let me know if you guys um, are having a hard time submitting assignments on time or if you need any assistance um, or help. Um, I'm here to support you, so please email me. Um, we can also uh, schedule Zoom sessions. So for participation and attendance, it's a fully online course, right? So our weekly assignments, which are typically block uh, discussion board posts, sometimes journal entries, um, are considered the participation in the course um, by, you know, uh, reading other people's posts and responding to them. That's the participating part. And then the attendance is, is writing your own posts, right? And in, in watching the activities, watching our lectures and responding uh, to the prompts that are provided to you in the discussion board posts. And so the points for that is 10 points each. Um, the typical time frame in the child development program is that your discussion board post entries are due the end of the day Thursday. And then by the end of day Sunday, uh, giving you enough time between Thursday and Sunday to read your other peers posts and to respond to at least two um, of their posts. And so um, that's encouraged to have them do by the end of the day Thursday just to help you out in terms of giving you enough time to answer, to, you know, read and respond to peers. Um, but if you do need more time, like through the end of Sunday to write your own, um, that's also okay. So, um, yeah. And then Students should not miss more than one class session. So, um, you know, if it's a traditional undergrad uh, student, I would be saying um, you can't miss more than one. Um, but for you guys, if if you guys miss it one week, please make it up just so you're not losing out on gaining any new knowledge um, and missing out on work. But it, if there becomes, you know, a lot of discussion board posts missed, that's when it would be um, considered more of a concern at that point, and I would be reaching out to you. Okay, I'm going to be skipping these. Do, 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 do. Here's your grade breakdown if you're interested in knowing all the point breakdowns. And I want to spend a little bit of time in your main assignments, which is um, it's called the Life Skills Project. And I broke it down into three parts for you just to help your success in completing the project. Um, you know, instead of it being like this big project due at the end, that seems overwhelming. I broke it down into three parts and they're due, um, you know, throughout the semester. Um, this is basically your, your only project for the course. And then there's your readings and everything else on Blackboard. And I'm going to go into that as well after this part. So first, um, you have a self-reflection paper. And so this paper's um, four pages, uh, not including, you know, if you had a title page, it's the four page count wouldn't be including the title page. So four pages of content. I do ask that it's double space, 12 point font, Times New Roman and one inch margins. Just for my own reading when I'm reading them, it's really hard for me to read papers when they're one single spaced. Um, just, I don't know, it just blends all together on the computer when I read each one, uh, you know, that way. Um, so it's a self-reflection. So there's no right or wrong way to answer this, right? It's about your own personal beliefs, attitude, attitudes and experiences that impact how you relate with children and your ability to foster a safe and inclusive and emotionally intelligent environment for the children you work with. Um, and so this is a paper that I, I will be the only one seeing your responses. So, uh, it's a safe space. Um, it, you know, I won't be sharing these with others. I don't give you guys an example, a student example of this assignment because it is personal. Um, but for your other, um, your two other parts to this project, I will be giving you, um, examples of to help you guide you. Um, so you, for this part of the project, it's one through seven prompts. You basically will be responding to each prompt, um, and giving an example. You don't need to rewrite. You can write this in essay format and they just flow. Um, you could bullet point, you know, number one, number two, it's up to you. Um, i most people kind of do it in that, in the essay format. You don't need to copy and paste these into the paper though. Um, and then you give an example for like each prompt, okay? 
So for the second part, it's basically you want to tie now into your personal experiences now into what is the literature saying on those um, six life skills that we're learning about in this class, which are attachment, self-regulation, uh, belonging, collaboration, contribution, and adaptability. And so um, once you finish your self-reflection, you might find yourself going, ooh, you know what? My development, my upbringing, I, um, I really struggled actually with collaborating well with others and adapting. And so I want to learn more about those life skills and research those so I can better grow those skills in myself um, and then as well for, um, you know, others, uh, you know, uh, the tea cares in your classroom. And so then you would pick two life skills to research for the literature review part two portion of your project. And so um, it is a literature review is basically um, it's a synthesis. So it's collecting information from journal articles. Right. And then you kind of, you know, you piece them together to form your own um, paper. Right, and so you organize it and evaluate and integrate the sources into one paper, cohes cohesive paper. So uh, once you pick your two life skills you want to research, um, you then um, want to find two journal articles for each life skill. Um, so it's a total of four from our Wilson Library database. I will be providing a video on how to locate those journal articles on your Blackboard. Um, using our Wilson Library database. Um, and you can uh, please include the following, an introduction, a literature review section, that's kind of the big bulk of your paper, and then a conclusion um, and a reference page. So this isn't requiring a specific format. I'm not asking for APA. I'm asking you to really just kind of identify your resources or identify your journal articles. These can be links. These can be like the names and the year. Um, and it's also helpful when you're referencing like your, your literature that you have found, your, your research in the paper, um, having some sort of in-text citation. And again, no required APA MLA format, just you know, if you want to put like the author in the year, just something to signify and identify where you retrieve that information from. Um, and this paper is a f uh, to be a full four to five pages of content, which doesn't include a title or reference page. Um, and what's fun about this paper is you really get to research on your two life skills, whichever direction you want to go into. So if you find articles that spark your interest, you can go that direction. Or if you want to know specifically about adaptation and a certain developmental delay or, you know, things like that, you can go that route as well. It's up to you. So really this paper is meant to dive deeper into the life skills rather than just an introduction of them. So we, we, I, you know, in my lectures, I, I presented the life skills and introduced the concepts. So please don't use the paper as just another introduction to the life skills and yes you can reference our textbook in your paper but that doesn't in, that doesn't count as a journal article and nor do I want to see you like referencing the textbook over and over again right just um it just it could be used for maybe like an introduction uh portion or something like that and then your final part is a powerpoint presentation um, it does say demonstration here, but that's a little hard to do since we're fully online. That's more for the in-person. So um, it should actually read PowerPoint presentation and application. So the objective of the presentation is to share your knowledge and application of the two life skills that you researched. So um, I believe, I, you know, I hold the belief we all learn from each other. Um, and this is the space where we get to share the tools um, that we are either using currently for these life skills development in our with our TK kids or ones that um, we have found in we would like to apply and um, you know utilize in the classroom so this is a really cool space to share um, what we learned in our research in our literature review portion in our research 
with your peers because um, we obviously did not all grab the same articles, right? And then we also get to learn um, about different um, activities you guys do um, or, you know, you uh, intend to do in, in, uh, in relation to the life skills you chose, okay? I mean, even I will watch some of these um, presentations and start, you know, I'll get a new book reference and I'm like, ooh, that one looks really great. And I literally will open my Amazon account and add it to my wish list or buy it. So um, it's a really cool concept, um, I, uh, way to, for us to grow um, in this part. So you will be creating a PowerPoint um, with the following prompts below, and then you present it to the class. How do you do that online? Well, you will have a discussion board where you submit your PowerPoint, and then you, in your PowerPoint, you will be, um, it's, a, it's a tool now you can have in your PowerPoint where you record your audio. Um, some people even are able to put their video, which is pretty cool, um, to help engagement. I found that really neat, um, but you don't have to. And so basically you you are presenting by using your audio just the same way as I'm presenting this um, overview of the, of the syllabus, right? So um, first you want to have a summary of the research you had learned covering the two life skills um, that you had selected, and then uh, you do... You will be uh, writing, uh, sharing about how these two life skills relate to the California Preschool Learning Foundations under the social emotional de development domain, and then explaining why those strategies align with that particular foundation. So, if you remember under our required readings, that is the link to the California Preschool Learning Foundations. And then uh, the last part is the application of the two life skills. So. Um, most people do more than two, um, you know, tools, but if you want to just do two, that's, that, that's what I'm asking for. So most people have like four <laughs> and that's just entirely, um, your choice. So, uh, so the first, but one does need to include the classroom environment. So for example, how would you modify an area of the classroom um, or the environment as a whole to meet the needs of a four-year-old or five-year-old child uh, to further their positive development of attachment. So that's just an example. And then the other um, application would be in either maybe an activity um, or something you do in the classroom um, that would help uh, in, enhance their development of the other's life skill that you have chosen. So just a tip, if you could please include photo photographs of the area or activity um you know the photographs can be original but since i know it is summertime and you're not in the classroom they also can be from the internet and then you can also include like short video clips or maybe it's video clips that you show the kids you know you can do that as well so i will have examples for part three and part two posted on blackboard i will not have them up yet because I actually, I can open up the literature review, but it is the one that I have right now. It is from a student, from an undergraduate student. And so it is APA, um, just so you're aware. And so um, that, like I had already reviewed, it isn't required of you. So just note that. Um, but you could kind of copy how she does her in-text citations as well. That could be helpful. Um, and then for your PowerPoint um, I will be actually selecting a different one, so I need to rewatch some and select um, a newer one for to upload as an example. So that'll go up in a little bit. Okay, now I want to go into our calendar. I keep it super simple because um, our class modules on Blackboard is really where it's all at. Okay, so here is our class calendar and has all the dates. We're only here for for eight weeks. Um, so you have a lecture, you have a lecture each week, and then I've just put dig deeper activities. Um, but really the main point is seeing your due dates for your, um, project. So part one and then part two here and part three here. I have your part three presentation due the seventh week so that in the eighth week you have time to watch other people's presentations. I used to have it it do the eighth week and then there was like no time for you guys to um watch others and that was like the whole purpose of the assignment um 
So every Sunday, I will be opening up the online class module for the week. So you have Sunday to Sunday to work on it. Um, and like I have mentioned, discussion board posts are due on Thursdays, end of day. And then, and then you know, interacting with two peers are also due on Sundays um, by the end, or yeah, are due by the end of the day. And like I said, for your own personal post. If you are unable to make it the Thursday deadline, that's fine. Um, just please complete it um, before this deadline of Sunday. Um, you don't want to get too behind it. Can pile up. And then I am going to go to our Blackboard for you to see. And I'm going to go to Student Preview so you can see what you... This might not be your specific uh, CRN, so it might look a little... You know, it might not be your number, but that's okay. It's the same. I'm going to student preview so you can see it. So it should, it should look how you, how it looks for you. So here's your sal syllabus and calendar that we just reviewed. You can either just view it or download. Here's a discussion board post for you and your peers in the class. I don't check this um, discussion board, but it's just for questions if you want to ask peers um, things. And then... Um, here is your assignment examples and then class material slash resources. I just add to this folder as the class goes on. So for example, I have more to add in here, but right now there's info on adverse childhood experiences and a little ACEs quiz um, because there is a prompt about this in your first part of your project. So you, this could help guide you in what, how to answer it. And then you'll see each module pop up as each Sunday. So I opened your first module. Uh, class starts tomorrow, 6-5. And so if you see here this little button, that shows everything. So show more will just give you the text of what to do for the week. So this is your breakdown. And then this little button is what gives you all your material for the week. So um, I have you know it numbered. So this week you are reviewing the syllabus and calendar, and then you can save them onto your desktop and print them if, prefer if preferred. And then you would be watching this video. Um, and then watch the first lecture video. It's broken up down into two parts. And then you have your discussion board post um, and a TED Talk. I really like opening with this TED Talk. Um, it's a good one. And so your discussion board post is talking about this right here. Um, I do have here missing discussion board posts count as missing class. Um, and then I will change the language of this missing more than one puts you at possibility for not passing the course. So like I just said in the, um, like I just said in the review of the syllabus, um, you know, missing this more than one discussion board post as pose for a concern that you're not gaining what you should be out of the class. And I would be reaching out to you and hoping as well that, you know, you would be making them up. Um, but you would not be uh, failing the course if you miss more than one. So please reach out to me if there are any issues. But it does pile up if you guys, um, you know, are late on things. So I do encourage you to finish your work as you go. So that is it for now. Each week when I open up a module, um, I typically will also have a week overview. So this one, I don't, week one, I don't have an overview because I kind of just do it in this video. But um, like week two, it'll say like week two overview. And then I literally will be kind of like how you open a class in person. So I'll be going over what's going on for the week and then what's to come. Okay. So please reach out to me um, if you guys need anything. My email is bballard at laverne.edu. And then I should answer um, pretty quickly within two days. If you don't hear from me, then you might have gotten my email wrong. Um, and then please reach out again. Thank you guys. Have a good rest of your day. I'm looking forward to this semester. Bye.